Hello, a very good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome, keep come on, coming on in, uh, filling up the seats in the front. Uh, very great to have you guys join us for today's service. It is uh, coming close to Christmas, Advent. This is the first Sunday of Advent officially, so uh, you can thank ANSI for setting up our decorations and our uh, very lovely Christmas tree. Uh, it's definitely very encouraging to be able to have you guys all be here with us today. Um, and as a season of Advent, something that we've been doing, this year we will not have uh, the lighting of the candles just for fire safety to keep things kind of safe, uh, but we will be having our Advent readings. Uh, and every week we'll have different people uh, giving these readings in the morning and in the evening. And today we have uh, one of our new families that have joined us uh, not too long ago. Uh, it's going to be Jen, Kelvin, and Ashlyn. So can I invite you guys to come up and uh, they're going to start our service uh, with today's reading. Um, yeah. You guys can come up here, and I will pan. Let me make this. Yes. And here is the microphone for you. I'll give it time for you guys to take a seat. Good morning. Today, we prepare our heart with the expectation of hope. Hope of salvation. Hope of restoration. Hope in a dark world. Our hope is the promises of our God. Jeremiah 33, verses 14 to 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will... Let us pray. Eternal God, as we await the coming of our Savior, give us the courage to hope. Give us grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives, for this community, and for the world. During this Advent season, may we be reminded of your promises to us and your fulfillment of them. Help us to prepare our lives for your coming within us. Through Jesus Christ, the source of our redemption and hope, amen. Thanks very much. I uh, invite the worship team to come up and lead us in worship. Should we all stand? Good morning, church. It's good to see you on this frosty, cold morning. Um, who's excited about the snow and Christmas? Yeah. Nobody. Everyone Woo. is. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Just before we start, let's um, yeah, really just meditate on those those words and those thoughts um, of Jesus coming. Uh, I don't know if you're in a a small group or a life group, but we've been starting our Advent series, and um, yeah, it's just been amazing to think about Jesus, think about how he came, such a, such a humble welcoming into uh, this, this earth, um, and yeah, what an amazing thought that our, our God would come to this earth, um, our holy God to, to a broken earth, and yeah, that is our hope today, every day that he came, and he's, he's coming again, um, so yes, God, we just thank you this morning for you, Jesus, for how you came to this earth, we thank you that you are our hope, um, our living hope this morning. And as we come to worship you, Lord, we come with uh, joy and gladness. Um, we come to praise you and adore you. And I just pray, Father God, wherever we are, um, yeah, Lord, that you would uh, come speak into our lives, into our hearts this morning. Yes, God, that you would uh, 
really show yourself Lord in every situation we find ourselves in however we're feeling coming into church this morning we thank you that you are a, a God who meets us where we are you are a God who loves us unconditionally and you see every part of our lives the things that people don't see Lord and you yeah you love us and you cherish us so yes God we yeah we come to praise you and come to worship you in Jesus name amen amen
Lord. What a, an amazing opportunity to come and adore you, to come and fix our eyes on you, Father God. And yes, God, we pray that we can be a people who yeah, praises you, Lord, not in just the good days, but in the bad days, Lord, and in the tough days. Um, yeah, God, may your joy be our strength. May uh, you be our hope every morning, every day, Lord.
that you are rich in love, slow to anger. And God, we choose to worship you this morning. We choose to fix our eyes on you. Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, as a church, that we can come and just bless your name together. What an amazing opportunity to be able to sing in one voice, Lord, that we bless your name, that we will still sing, Lord. So thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. We, yeah, we just ask that you come and meet with us this morning, that your Holy Spirit and your presence would be with us here. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Thanks a lot for leading us in that time of worship, Derek. Um, as you guys know, first Sunday of Advent, uh, and we had a wonderful reading to start off uh, today's service. And uh, yes, we still have Explorers. We only have a few more Explorer sessions left before we break for uh, Christmas. Um, with our Explorers ministry, we have three classes, uh, Little, Junior, and Grand, and they'll be dismissed in a second for that. But first, uh, if this is your first time here to church, if this is your first time uh, and you have kids, uh, this QR code lets us be able to register them. Uh, it's also on the sign-in sheet, so you can scan that if you haven't done so already. Uh, it'll mean that we'll be able to have any information or emergency contact and things like that. Now, uh, the other thing that we do is we all come together for a storyteller. And we've had this uh, in a variety of ways with a little bit of sketches, a little bit of action. Today, we have another wonderful video talking about Christmas. So I'm going to ask them to hit the lights, and then uh, we're going to watch this video. Okay, I hope you guys are ready. Over 2,000 years ago, in the little town of Bethlehem, something miraculous happened that would change everything. God gave us the best gift ever. But to really understand how great His gift was, we have to go back to the beginning of time. When God made the world, everything was perfect. The first people, Adam and Eve, lived in a beautiful garden and spent time with God every day. That is, until they disobeyed the one rule God gave them. At that moment, all of the wrong things in the world began, and their friendship with God was broken. Since God is perfect, Adam and Eve could no longer be friends with Him because of their sin. But God still loved them and promised to send a Savior who would take the punishment for them and all people. This was a gift that would fix everyone's friendship with God forever. As years passed, God reminded people of His promise by sending messages through prophets. One was named Isaiah, and he delivered a message that a special woman would give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Another prophet named Micah let the people know that Jesus would be born in the town of Bethlehem. The people continued to wait for God to send someone to save them. They trusted that God would keep every one of his promises, even if they had to wait, and they waited for a really long time. Then, finally, God surprised a girl named Mary who was engaged to a man named Joseph. God sent the angel Gabriel to give her a message don't be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. Mary asked the angel, how can this be? Because she wasn't even married. The angel told her, the Holy Spirit will come to you and the power of the Most High God will cover you. The baby will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Mary sang a song praising God as she remembered his promises from long ago and trusted his new promise to her. But Joseph didn't understand, and because he didn't want people to think badly about Mary, he planned to secretly call the marriage off. But an angel came to him in a dream and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to accept Mary as your wife. The baby inside her is from the Holy Spirit. Mary will give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel told him to do, and they got married. God was doing all the things he had promised long ago to fix our friendship with him, and he wasn't done yet. He was about to come and be with us. When it was almost time for Mary to have her baby, the ruler of the country ordered all the people to go to their hometowns to be counted. 
So Mary and Joseph loaded up their donkey and traveled to the town of Bethlehem, where Joseph's family was from. When Mary and Joseph arrived, the time came for Mary to have her baby. But there was one big problem. The inn in Bethlehem was full, so Mary and Joseph had no choice but to stay in the stable where sheep eat and donkeys sleep. And later that night, the wait was finally over. In a place no one would ever expect, Jesus, the Savior God had promised, was born. That same night, some shepherds were watching their sheep when suddenly an angel stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining all around them, and the angel said, Don't be afraid, because I'm bringing you some good news. Today, your Savior was born in Bethlehem. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph. Right there before their eyes, just like the angel had said, they saw their Savior, Jesus, and their hearts were full of joy. Many days later, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star and have come to worship him. The star they had seen went ahead of them, and when it finally stopped over the place where Jesus was, the wise men were filled with joy. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened the gifts they had brought to give him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But what they didn't know was that Jesus was really God's gift to them. Just like the wise men, we give gifts at Christmas to remember God's best gift ever, Jesus. Because Jesus came to earth as a baby, lived a perfect life, died to take the punishment for our sin, and came back to life, we can all be friends with God every day. As followers of Jesus, we know that his birthday deserves a super fun celebration because Jesus really is the best gift ever. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, great recapping of the Christmas story. Um, with that, we're going to invite the kids to head off into their Explorer classrooms now. Uh, you can head off to your groups. We'll start with the youngest group. Yeah, but we're starting with Little Explorers. If you are in preschool or reception, head to Edwina in the back. She's there with a red shirt. Uh, and again, this is your first time here. You can uh, scan the QR code there, but that's a they're back there with the red. If you are in junior explorers, uh, years one, two, and three in school, go to the green shirted man, young man, boy back there uh, with the green shirt, and that's your junior explorers. And for the grand explorers, head over there to the orange shirts of the tag team duo of Hannah and Hoi Fai, and uh, be prepared to be making some amazing crafts and doing some fun games today. So they're going to be making their way up and out of here, and suddenly we have so many more seats. Ah, you can space out and feel socially distanced safe. Um, while that's happening, I'm going to run through a few small news and notices and things that's coming up in the church that we want you guys to know about and you guys can be excited about. First off, super, super excited, next week is our baptism service. Uh, so in the morning, there's going to be seven people baptized here. There's no explorers that week. Uh, so if you want to, uh, they'll join in. They can hear the testimonies. We'll open up the baptism pool and all be seated a little bit differently. Uh, but you'll be able to just hear all of them share their testimonies and we'll be able to watch them get baptized. Um, definitely very exciting. Really looking forward to it. Some great testimonies I've had a chance to, to read through already. In the evening, we'll be having prayer and praise uh, and uh, hopefully inviting people to also give longer versions of their testimonies if they'd like, because that'd be really good. Uh, so you can join us for that in the evening as well. On the 19th of December uh, is our Christmas celebration. So in the morning, we'll be having a Christmas celebration. The kids are going to be singing some songs, I think. They don't even know that's going to happen yet. Uh, but that's what they're going to do on the 12th to practice that. Um, and then uh, there'll be a carol service in the evening. So you can join us for uh, both of those or one of them if you like. And on the 25th, on Christmas Day, we won't be having a Christmas service. Uh, hopefully, you guys can spend that time with family. Or if not, you can even visit a local church uh, and see what that's like. Um, but on the 26th, we will be having a Boxing Day service. Uh, and that will just be in the morning. So Ansonia will be leading that. Um, 
on top of that, uh, church members, BCC church members, you're an official church member uh, and you filled out forms. Uh, on the 11th of December, there's going to be an EGM to vote on our Cantonese pastoral candidates. Uh, that's going to be on Zoom at 8 p.m. and you should be getting a notice or information or an email or a letter about that soon enough. Uh, but that'll be pretty good. Uh, Obviously, for the English congregation, we've only seen them on video once, uh, but I will let you know the committee's interviewed them. Uh, they're happy with them. The pastoral team has interviewed them. We're having them. The Cantonese congregation are meeting them. They're happy with them as well. Uh, they're going to be focusing mostly on the Cantonese side, uh, and we really want to be able to encourage and bless them in that. So uh, definitely hope uh, the votes are for hiring them uh, because it will also take the stress off maybe some of the English congregation staff, which we would be happy about. But, uh, you know, we're all in this together. Um, so uh, with that, looking forward to that as well. It'll be, it will be super exciting to suddenly have uh, such a large team uh, in our church working. Um, so uh, we're going to come to a time of offering now, so I invite the stewards to come forward. Uh, if you're first time here or just visiting, uh, there's no pressure or obligation to give. This is a way for us to worship the Lord. Uh, if you're prepared in advance to online, uh, you can also do that as well. Um, while uh, our welcome team... Our stewards are going around. You're also interested. If you're like, Ashley, I want to get more involved in the church, uh, you can also become one of these amazing welcomers. You can come here. You'll be able to learn all about this. If you're interested, uh, speak to Simon afterwards. Simon's like, oh, that's new news to me, but that's the exciting time. Um, now, while they're going around with the offering, we're going to also take a little bit of time to pray for something. And we're going to be praying for our baptism cans. This is what these people look like. Oh, there's pictures of them. They're like, oh, I thought this was just for the forum, Bert. Nope. Needed it for something else, too. Uh, this is them. Uh, it's uh, Martin and Naomi and Alan and Vanjie and Leanne and Juliet and Marcus. Uh, so it's very lovely. Uh, some of them are students. Some of them are young working adults. Some of them are young students. Uh, but definitely very happy about this uh, and really looking forward to that. Uh, we do want to pray for them this upcoming week, uh, just as they're preparing for baptism, uh, even as their testimonies. For a lot of them, actually quite a few of them, their parents aren't Christians. Uh, so this is quite an exciting time for them to be able to also share this with their family as well. Uh, so will you just join me in just praying for these candidates? Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your amazing gift of life and that it doesn't just transform uh, uh, us, but it can transform our families and communities around us as well. And we thank you that here in the BCC that we've been um, so blessed to have these seven young individuals just so eager to get baptized, to declare um, their faith in you, to declare the grace that they've received from you, to declare that they know that they've been forgiven of their sins, and to declare that they walk with you now. Um, we thank you so much for that, Lord. And we just pray uh, for each one of them, for, for Martin, for Naomi, for Alan, for Vanji, for Leanne, for Juliet, for Marcus. We pray for your spirit just to cover over them, to encourage them, to build them up this week, uh, to them courage as they share their testimonies out in uh, public. Um, and we pray that that day is just filled with your joy and your peace and your presence, Lord. So we thank you so much for this, Lord, and we lift your name up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks a lot. I'm going to give the time over to Ansonia now, and she's going to uh, give us today's word. And she's also going to be leading us in communion today, too, as well. So uh, just give you a heads up on that. All right. Come on up. Thanks, Bet. Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are getting warmer. Oh, I should take this off, shouldn't I? Excuse me. Um, so today is actually the first Sunday of Advent, as you can see with the decorations. And in town, if you've been to town, you've obviously been to the German market. It's a great place to be. Um, and then you've got all the shops. They're decked out with decorations. It's all very exciting. And um, yes, so what does Advent mean? What does Advent mean? Let's go back to, oh, no, no, no. I want it to the Advent slide, please. Yeah. So Advent, the word Advent is interesting because the word Advent is actually originally a Latin word. And it basically means coming or an arrival at your destination. Um, the season of Advent is about anticipating an arrival, anticipating, getting ready for Jesus coming. 
Advent um, is, is constantly being talked about at school. Um, so for me, when I was a young child learning about Advent, I thought it was about opening Advent calendar doors um, to reveal chocolate. That, that was my young child um, thinking. But nowadays, we all know, like I'm an adult now, um, I think, and um, it's about Jesus' coming, okay? Um, in our life groups, if you attend a life group, we, we are going through this devotional series through Word Go, and there's an Advent series, and so every week um, the life groups are talking about it. But if you aren't in a life group, I encourage you to be part of a life group or not. Um, and then if you want to also be doing this devotional, um, it's called Word Go, and it's got an Advent series. And so every week we'll also be going through it in church as well. So each week, um, this week, we're starting off with the word hope in terms of how Jesus is our living hope. Next week is faith um, through the form of baptisms and hearing their testimonies of faith stories, which is very exciting. We love to hear a good story. Um, joy is the following week after that in how there's so much tremendous, endless joy because of our Savior's birth. And then finally, um, the week before, well, the Sunday before Christmas, uh, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is how Jesus was the Prince of Peace, granting us peace that surpasses all understanding. But for this week, we're focusing on the word hope. Now, the word hope defined, I looked at the dictionary, um, I looked online, of course, on Google, and um, it's basically, to define the word hope means, it's a noun, um, it's a feeling of expectation, and a desire for a particular thing to happen. You want something to happen. So well, I give an example. He looked around in hope of finding a girlfriend. Or um, it can also be uh, a verb as well, wanting something to happen or be the case. She's hoping to pass her driving test, um, things like that. So. This week, I was paying attention to how often I say the word hope. I hope for the, you guys this week also pay attention to how often you also use the word hope. Um, I notice I say it a lot day to day. Hope you have a good weekend. Or um, telling my friend who's recently had a baby, hope you've had a full night's sleep and baby's okay. I hope to see you again. Um, but in terms of how hope is divine, defined in the world, so outside of the church setting, um, I don't know if you remember, but last September, September 2020, there was that 91-year-old grandma from Coventry. She was the first person in the UK, was it in the world? No, UK, who had received her fir the, the first vaccination in the UK. And it was all very exciting, and it marked to the world a big, massive hope. Um, even 2021, January, um, that was the year that everyone said, yeah, this year is the year of hope. Even when we go for vaccines and boosters or whatnot, um, you're like, yeah, there's hope. Um, so the world is, is all about hope right now. Um, we always use the word hope. Um, and for some of us, it's, you know, I pray, instead of I pray that you'll get better, maybe it's, you might change it to, I hope that you will get better soon. I hope the weather is nice for the weekend. Um, or, yeah, I hope the snow melts, or not, if you really like the snow. Um, but when you hope for something, the question is, how much percentage-wise are you sure that it will happen? How much percentage are you sure that it will happen? 100%? No. How can you be sure that this thing that you hope will happen? There's not always this guarantee that the weather will be good. There's not always that guarantee that your friend with stage four cancer will be cured completely. But when you hope for something, you are desiring for a particular action to happen. There's that sense of expectation, a want, a wish, something to happen. And oftentimes, uh, the world says about hope, um, it's quite vague. Um, there's always going to be that uncertainty. Even, you know, Disney, they, they like to push for when you wish upon a star, your dreams will come true type of thing. Um, but I think for, for a lot of non-Christians, um, I attend this uh, local weekly club with non-Christians, and um, there was this lady who recently got into hospital, and um, our organizer like organized a card for us to sign, and I signed it. But everybody in that, in that club was writing, my thoughts are with you, well wishes to you, get well soon. And I was like, nah, I'm just going to write, I pray that you'll get better, da-da-da-da, um, praying for you. Um, 
But anyway, but as for um, Christians or non-Christians, we're all alike. When we write about hope or say, talk about hope, we have, you know, similar sayings of pleasantries, positive, hopeful messages. The world wants hope. The world needs hope. Um, it's all based on positivity, um, but yeah, we, we all need that hope. There is hope for the world, actually. There is definitely hope for the world. Um, for God, um, he, you and I all know that God gives us that hope. What's interesting is, is that for the past few weeks, as I've been preparing for this first advent um, of hope, God has actually been challenging me about this word hope. Um, he keeps re-telling me this thing, this word hope, not just because of the sermon. Um, throughout the whole of last year, I was struggling with the word hope. Um, even this year, it's always been like up and down. I feel like God is having me preach on hope regularly. It seems like um, a, a regular assignment, but I don't understand his assignment at times. Um, but at the same time, I wonder if it's the same for you guys. How is your hopefulness? Has it shifted during 2020 or 2021? Have, have there been lots of ups and downs, lots of hopelessness? Good news is that there's hope for the world and there's hope for you and me. The Bible talks extensively about hope, um, and we know that because of Jesus. Um, in a church setting, we have underemphasized the significance of our Christian hope. Our hope is very different from the world's positivity, your wishes will come true type hopefulness. Christian hope, on the other hand, is 100% certain. The future is secure and it is helping and healing and sanctifying you to become more like Jesus. Hebrews 6.19 describes our hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. A sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. An anchor is something that's so heavy, um, you know, it's actually the designer, I think if you, if you buy any jewelry from Birmingham, you'll see like the hallmark, it's, it's, it has an anchor, which is really cool. Um, I don't know why we have it, but uh, we're nowhere near the coast. But basically an anchor is something that you would use on a boat or a ship, a large vessel on the waters. And it always gets lowered into the foundation of the ocean stabilizing your your boats to not get tossed to and, to and fro. An anchor in a Christian setting is a reminder that just like just like how it calms the boat, you know, God will calm us and help us when the winds blow and the seas get stormy, we will re remain secure because we are tied to something solid and true. Our anchor of the soul is firmly rooted in Jesus. And so Jesus gives us that stability in our lives because of the promises of the future that Christ has made. And if you read on, um, this, this, this nice little uh, two, yeah, few verses here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So it is according to God's great mercy. He, ha he is a merciful father. Mercy meaning God's compassion and forgiveness. Though we are deserving of punishment, he is a merciful father. He has caused us to be born again, a second chance, a new life. Born again in, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This living hope through a resurrection, the same power that led Jesus to raise from, rise from the dead, defeating the grave, is the same power that we have and are born again into this living hope. It's not a dead hope. Living is, is not going to be dead then. Um, it's alive. It's active. It's happening. It's very much functioning, moving, growing, and breathing, and empowering. Jesus proved that this hope is very much alive and active, just like how he died and rose again. This is a very sure hope. And then an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. This future inheritance is exciting. It's an eternal hope that we will not be harmed by death. 
We will not be tainted or stained by evil. We will not fade with time. We are death proof. We are sin proof. We are age proof, fail proof inheritance because God guards it and preserves it in heaven, holy, secure, and 100% guaranteed. We have a space in heaven, as long as you believe. Um, This living hope, it is the here and now, and it is also to come as well. The new heavens and the earth. It's not a haphazard, wishy-washy, wishful thinking of a better world, but rather this hope looks to an eternity with the Father because he lives and those that believe in him will also live. And God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It's basically talking about Jesus' return, this enduring hope that will last and endure forever. A sure hope, an eternal hope, and an enduring hope. These are the three elements in that in that passage there. And then there's this quote. I wonder if you recognize it. I'll read it to you, and I wonder if you recognize it. A little hope is effective. A lot of hope is dangerous. A spark is fine as long as it's contained. So contain it. I wonder if anybody recognizes it. It's from a movie. Okay, so this, this is a quote from uh, Hunger Games. And um, this is quite an old film. It's one of, I really like the books in the movie. And it's basically um, a conversation between the games master of Hunger Games with the president, President Snow. And he's like, ooh, do you know why we just don't all just kill them all? Why do we put them all into this game and, you know, from each district? I I don't want to spoil it too much. Um, But basically they had to fight and they had to fight to their death. It was really like quite sad. Um, And... And the games master's like, I don't know, because we want to give them hope. We want to give them a chance of survival. Um, and I found this commentary about it uh, from a blog post, and um, and it basically reads: the goal of many in power is to give people just enough hope that they continue behaving docile enough to not question them, because those in power, just like President Snow at the Capitol, cannot give us too much hope. It's dangerous to give too much hope because with hope comes confidence, with confidence comes strength, and with strength comes revolution. So the only way to keep hope, confidence, strength, and revolution at bay is to contain it. So it's true. If you have a lo- if you have a little bit of hope, it's not that powerful. But if you have a lot of hope, it come becomes confidence. Confidence becomes strength. Strength becomes revolution. Much like how God sent His Son as an act of hope, He gives us that confidence. He gives us strength because we have hope through Him, through Christ. And through that strength, we can be part of Jesus' revolution. It's exciting because Jesus actually came and he started a revolution. A revolution being changed to to, um, come and free the oppressed, give sight to the blind, as he claimed in Luke 4. But Advent time is actually a time to remember that Jesus came. He came to give us hope. He came to save. And we know that if we have been saved and we believe If you are constantly walking with God, you will know what revolution he has done in your life and in in those around you. Let's look at the Advent passages, um, Luke 1, 26 to 38. Um, I'm just going to skip forward a little bit. But basically, um, the angel comes to, uh, to, 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 who was it, Joseph here, and tells him, he came to her, well, actually, no, to, ver- to the Virgin Mary, so, sorry, 28. And he came to her and said, greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The same power that granted a miracle of Mary, um, a virgin, becoming uh, pregnant, and also with Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, in her ripe old age to conceive a son, despite her barrenness from before, who, yeah, she gave birth to what we, what we would know as John the Baptist. These are just beautiful examples of miracles. I don't know about you, but um, I have a fair amount of female friends, and they, I love hearing about their pregnant stories. And it's always really, really beautiful to hear about how miraculous God, um, you know, helps them in their pregnancy. Um, I have, I've had some friends that have struggled with infertility um, through the years, and, and to hear that they, you know, they get pregnant, I'm like, yes, praise God. The, this is this is incredible. But the fact is, for Elizabeth, she was barren; she couldn't conceive. Mary, she didn't she didn't have uh, another male person's thing um, to get her pregnant. Instead, she got pregnant through the Holy Spirit. That's incredible. This is an incredible power, um, and I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, you all remember the story of Sarah and Abraham too when we were looking at the Genesis series. Sarah also was barren. I'm reminded of Hannah in the Old Testament who also gave birth despite being barren and struggling, um, giving birth to Samuel who was a prophet. And so God basically makes things possible. Even though sometimes we may feel hopeless and full of despair, with doubts of things coming to happen or fruition, God still makes things possible. It's knowing that God has that power and that should encourage us to have hope for the future. Without hope, you definitely have uh, this thing called despair. Um, you may not have a good outlook on the future. You can't see beyond tomorrow. You feel hopeless. I don't know if that's a one-off thing or if it's a continual thing. If it is a continual thing, um, possibly for some people it could develop into a depression. I'm pretty co convinced that Elijah in the Bible was pretty depressed. Um, but the point is, is that I know that God is in the business of providing words and encounters and providing the people to come into your life when you don't have much hope, to encourage you to have hope, to bring you to hope and give healing, granting you hope and a future. And so today is the first Sunday of Advent. Um, Advent is about Jesus' coming. And Advent is about remembrance and anticipation. So remembering that Jesus, our Savior, took on flesh and came to live among us. He offered his life as a sacrifice for us, dying for our sins, resurrecting from death. This season of Advent leading up to Christmas, we don't just celebrate that he came but we celebrate why he came. The second advent is basically about anticipation. We also anticipate the promise of our savior who promised to return again. After Jesus finished the work he came to do, he promised that he would return and establish his kingdom for all of eternity. And so celebrating Christmas is actually an act of worshipping our living Savior who will come again and make all things new. We remember the first advent, when and why Jesus came, and we anticipate the second coming, Jesus coming back. And so we're actually going to come to a time of communion now. Um, and, and basically communion is a wonderful time where Christians across the world take part as an act of remembering what Jesus did and why. And um, so I think we're going to have the stewards hand out because we forgot to have you pick up them. Um, so if you can just raise your hand um, for those that have been baptized, um, please, we invite you to join us in a time of communion. If not, uh, if you've not been baptized, we, we ask you kindly just to just uh, reflect quietly and uh, think about what Jesus has done.
We eat bread and we drink wine to anticipate his second advent, his second coming. And we continue to proclaim the Lord's amazing gospel until he comes. The Lord's Supper is not just about his death, but also remembering that he is our risen Lord and Savior. And it is him we call our living hope. There's some more in the middle there as well. So we're going to, if you've received one, we're all going to peel off the top layer. Just carefully peel because that will have the bread. And we're going to eat it. Have it, take it together. Let me, let me just say a quick prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for your, for your bread that was broken for us. We thank you, Father, for what you have done for us. For I received from the Lord that what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all take the bread together as an act of um, solidarity. Next up, I'd like you to peel off the next section to reveal the wine. Hold on until we all are ready to drink it together. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's all drink the wine together. Let's pray. Our Lord, our Savior, we thank you so much for the blood and the bread that you broke and shed for us. We thank you, Father, for that power of raising your son. And Father, we look forward to him coming and we continue to proclaim your coming. We thank you, Father, that God, yeah, for this season of Advent, a reminder of remembering and anticipating your arrival. And so may the God of hope fill all of us with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may all abound in your living hope. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The stewards are going to come around and collect any litter um, so that, yeah. Okay, and we're going to come to a time of worship now. Thank you. Sansi, uh, shall we stand? Let's come and worship. And I just encourage you during this time. Let's, uh, yeah, we've given this, we've been given this time where we can uh, think about not only uh, Jesus's coming as a baby uh, coming to Earth, but yeah, this this time to think about Jesus, um, yeah, being our Savior and coming for a purpose to forgive us of our sins uh, and to bring us to a place where we are right with God again and I just want to read a verse um, from Romans Romans 5 um, and I'm going to start from verse 2 it says because of our faith Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops faith of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. 
And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Yes, God, we thank you that that we can hope in you and that hope never disappoints. Unlike the different things that we might hope for in this life, um, in relationships, jobs, um, finances, Lord, whatever it may be, Lord, they they don't last and they don't give us the, the hope that we need, Father God, in this world, which is you, Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, that you love us so deeply. May that be something that we remember this morning, that you loved us so much that you would give us your your Holy Spirit, that you would indwell with us, God, that you would be with us each and every day. Thank you, Lord, that you um, have given us that hope, that you are a continuous living hope that never never fades, Father. So we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. to 
separated from us from you lord you made a way for us to be drawn into your presence what was broken you healed in our shame you forgave us god what an amazing honor and privilege is to be called not just your slaves or your servants but your friends and your children we thank you lord and this christmas lord we just want to dwell in that lord we thank you so now may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Please have a seat. Thank you for joining us in worship. We look forward to seeing you guys next week at the baptism service. If you're worried about numbers, uh, we'll also be broadcasting online. Also on the way out, there are some church calendars that you can pick up as you want. Uh, I think it's pretty much one per family-ish. Uh, but yeah, feel free to grab them. And remember to pick up your children. They are still in this building somewhere. See you guys next week.